fabulous audience members who came all the way out here at noon on a Saturday. How are you feeling? Good, because we're about to start the show. Um, Speakers Up is probably the coolest thing that I've had the honor of being involved with thus far in my career. Um, this is our inaugural show. This is also my first opportunity to engage with the robot people of the internet. Hi, robot people. I hope you're having a good time. Um, we'll make sure that that continues to happen. For those who you probably are informed, but for those who do not know, Speakers Up is a show that is intended to give platforms to poets focusing on their own poems out of lived experience on the topics of social justice and the intersections of their identities in the world. Um, I think that that is probably one of the most necessary aspects of this performance poetry thing that we do, that we're sharing our stories with each other because that is truly the way that we are able to connect with each other and find greater levels of understanding and compassion for each other as people. So for just a quick moment, give it up for the people organizing this show, Mason Granger and so Piercy, because this show is really, really, really cool. I'm quite excited. I'm going to do a poem for you real quick, and then we're going to kick this off with the people who are you're actually here to see. I am so grateful for your time and your attention. The first time, sophomore year, we were at band camp. She was the last person that I expected. No, seriously. I know everybody always says that, but she seemed so Catholic, <laughs> popular. She didn't think it was my first, my assumed reputation bubbling off of me like the summer heat. She asked me to, but then laid back, passive, expectant, waiting for me to teach her the steps. It's just, girls came to me in those years. Eye contact in the mirror of the locker room, the tiniest of nods as I smoked cigarettes moodily on the corner, beckoning me to the basement halls of our high school or the back seat of a car, their lips sealed but opening. And you know, I must have been some kind of gateway drug to the queer, to the heady vibrations of desire that hijack every nerve ending of the body in adolescence, waiting for a target to focus itself on, like every breath of air is battery lick electric and her mouth is tungsten and copper. The first time, I think we were 12, we were two barely budding mall goths without a cause. We spent that summer in the fickle, ring-pop-licking throes of best bitchhood, the kind of friendship that crystallizes fast and monumental the way it only does in childhood, like a curio show that rolls into town and then sets up in the old fairgrounds overnight. Suddenly, the night air is full of a thousand blinking lights, fried dough grease sticking to your chin, and the world feels splayed open to you. It's wonders endless, waiting to be named, and you are young, and everything has never been more yours, and her mouth is moving towards you, and this night will never end, not realizing that you will wake up tomorrow and be 25, and the field will just be a field again, mud-rutted, unremarkable. The first time was not what I expected, though I knew it would come. I was outside of some hip fucking show with more mistake than a man, smoke curling from my mouth as I pressed him up against a wall and maybe it was the deceptively delicate nature of his hands or my bare head, shaved, uneven, glaring the square I'd learned to carry in my shoulders, my jaw, but I heard the bottles smash at our feet before I heard the slurs drooling out of their open mouths, fucking queers. And I think, in a way, that I was relieved that people like us wait our whole lives for this, Already no violence, but grit our teeth on the gag of this special brand coiled tight, nodding our fists. It's like the difference between a dream and wakefulness. We know it's real if it hurts. Like somehow, even here, like this with him, they could smell it on me. Not boy, not girl, right mouth, wrong body, blood dripping down my ankle, snarling a mess that I couldn't hide, whether you wanted me to or not. Thank you. Y'all are real kind. There's some really phenomenal poetry that's about to hit you. Big
basically every single person that is featuring in this two-hour showcase is somebody that I would drive to New York to go watch a featured set from. Um, so it's a huge privilege to have all of these talented people in the room. I'm going to take up as little space here as possible so that you can have more time to hear from those poets. But without further ado, first, we are going to be hearing from Amin Drun Law, which is really exciting. Um, he is a Palestinian-American poet and activist from Washington, D.C. His work has been seen on Verses and Flow, Button Poetry, and Slam Find, and he is generous enough to be here sharing his work with us. Please give your warm love and affection to Amin Drew Law. Woo! 